An important part of inheritance is understanding how the classes interact with one another. And if you're going to have multiple classes interacting with one another, one thing that must be understood is how the constructors of the different classes are going to function. So let's say that I was writing a program where I had a character named Laser Man, and Laser Man is a character, so it can use the features of the character class. So what I want to show now is how would constructors play into the inherited relationship between laser man and character. If I was going to write the constructor for the character2 class, it's going to look something like this. System out print line, character2 constructor, and then we're going to set the level of all characters who are created from this class as level 10. And you're going to see why I have that print line statement in just a sec. And then I'm going to create the constructor for the laser man class. And I'm going to say system out print line laser man to constructor and num charges is assigned to 100. Now, why did I have the system out print line statements inside of the constructor saying character to constructor and laser man to constructor? Well, let's see what happens when we create an object of the laser man class. So we say laser man to laser equals new laser man to. What would output might be interesting to you because what it's going to say is character to constructor and then laser man to constructor. Meaning somewhere in there it's calling the superclass constructor even though we're only creating an object of the subclass. So let's go through the program flow and see if we can see how this inherited relationship is working with the constructors. So what we do is we create an object of the LaserMan2 class. And it goes into the LaserMan2 class to look at its constructor. But it realizes, oh my goodness, this is inheritance going on. And therefore, I have to meet the needs of the superclass before I can continue on with the needs of the subclass. So it's going to get to about this point and then go up to the superclass's constructor. And what do we find inside of the superclass's constructor? Well, it's going to print character constructor 2 and assign level to 10. Then once it's finished with that operation, it's going to return to the laser man 2's constructor and finish it out saying system out print line laser man 2 constructor and assigning num charges to 100. When first looking at inheritance, this is kind of an odd program flow, but it makes sense if you think about it. Both the needs of the superclass and the subclass have to be met. Now, is there some way that we can indicate that the needs of the superclass are being met and it just not being implicit, just happening behind the scenes without us putting anything to say that this is happening? Well, yes, we could put something inside of the subclass and we could say super parentheses. And what that is doing, in effect, is it's calling the superclass constructor. It's calling the character to constructor. Now it's optional if the character2 class does not have any attributes or anything that needs any data sent to it. So the code that I showed you earlier would work 100%, but we could add super there just to indicate and remind ourselves that there is a relationship between laser man and character2. Now, let's say that we wanted to change up our laser man class just a little bit, and hopefully you can see how I did that with adding 90 to the constructor. And what 90 is going to be is the number of charges laser man can shoot. So instead of 100, I want the user to be able to define how many lasers a laser man can shoot inside of the constructor. And so we're going to have to make some changes to the constructor. We're going to have to take in the value that's being sent over. And then instead of setting num charges to 100, we're going to set it to charge the value of our formal parameter. So now when we say system out print line level equals laser dot level, well, level cannot be changed in the superclass, so this is going to output 10. But when we say charges equals laser dot get charges, it's going to say charges equals 90. And so now we have given more flexibility and added the ability for the user or the client program to change the value of the charges. Now that's all well and good. What if we want to give the ability for the user or the client program to not only set the charges, but also set the character level? We could do that by adding in the constructor a variable called level and assigning level to LVL. 
But how would we get the information to the superclass? Because the problem is, an object of the Laser Man 4 class is being created, but there is no Character 4 object being created. So what we have to do is we have to use the constructor of the Laser Man 4 class to get information to the Character 4 class. And so you can see inside of the Laser Man 4 constructor, I've added 9 and 90. But this too is going to represent a problem because if we use the Laser Man 4 constructor, it's only taking in one value. It's not taking in both the charge and the level. But we're going to have to change this. So therefore, now we take in both the level and the charge. But we know that the level is not going to stay inside of the Laser Man 4 class we want it to be sent up to the superclass. Wouldn't it be nice if we had something that calls the superclass's constructor? Well, you should be shouting by now. We do have something. It's the call right here, super. How do you think we could utilize it to send the information up? Well, it's just as easy as putting in the data. So we're adding level to our call to the superclass. And now that information gets to character four and we can now change the information inside of character four, specifically the level of a character. So now let's see what would happen if we were to step-by-step -step run through this program. And at the end of it, we're going to output the level and the charges. So we start with creating the object. It's going to go to the subclass constructor but realize right away, inheritance is involved. It needs to meet the needs of the superclass. And what need is that? Well, it needs a level. So it's going to send the level information up to the superclass, meet its needs, come back down to the Laser Man 4 constructor, and set the charges through the second formal parameter of the Laser Man 4 constructor. Once this is accomplished, all the values have been set it would say the level is nine and the charges are 90. One very important point to make right here is this super call right here to the super class constructor must be the first call. You cannot have it anywhere else inside of the constructor. If it is anywhere else in the constructor, it's going to throw an error because the needs of the super class must be met first and then the needs of the subclass can be met. So what I'd like to do now is add another instance variable to the superclass, and that is going to be a name. So we're going to give the name zap level 9 90 charges. And so in order to add it to the character class, we're going to add the instance variable at the top there, private string name. We're going to add a getter that's going to return the name to the program. Go ahead and pause the program and see if you can figure out how the code can be changed in both the Laser Man and Character 4 class to incorporate this new instance variable name in such a way that would allow the Laser Man 4 constructor to send information to the subclass up to the superclass. Okay, let's see how this would work. In the end of the program, we're going to print out a name, a level, and the charge. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is go to the LaserMan4 constructor and add a variable that it's going to take in. We're going to add a string called n. The name does not belong inside of the subclass, so we're going to send it up to the superclass. We do that through the call to the super constructor. And so we'd say n comma level. Character 4 is not ready to take in a name, so we'd have to change the constructor to add string n and int level, the two things that's going to be taken in from the constructor. And then we would say name is equal to n. And so now we've accomplished our goal of being able to take in a name that's going to be an instance variable of the superclass and pass it through the subclass in order to get to the superclass. And so if we were to run this program now, it would say the name is Zap, the level is 9, and the charges are 90. 
in summing up constructors with inheritance, one of the most important things to remember is a subclass constructor must meet the needs of both the superclass and the subclass. And as we've shown, the superclass's constructor's needs are met before the needs of the subclass constructor. If nothing is being passed to the superclass, the call to the superclass constructor is optional. But if something must be passed from the subclass to the superclass, the call to the superclass constructor is necessary and it must be the first call in the subclass. Because as stated in number two, the superclass needs its needs met first and then the subclass will get its needs met. Inheritance is a cornerstone of Java and understanding how constructors work within the inheritance framework is essential to using inheritance. As we've shown, the problem stems from only creating one object, but yet having to meet the needs of both the super and subclass. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you like videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.